would you please sit down? <laughs> We're trying to do... Oh, help me. Wait, we got to set our, our timer. Now, Nancy, you called me up here this morning just because it's so cold outside. I know I heard some tears in your voice because I think you were missing me. <laughs> but you didn't tell me what we're going to do today. Is this a history files? Is this a name that road? Oh. It's not name that road because we are not going out in the car. Well, it's like oh, we've had <laughs> people of the audience. We have had like two inches of snow every night for the last yeah. four days. So is this a good day not to really be driving, bombing around the county, huh? <laughs> well, I have to tell you, the other day, for about 20 minutes, there was this big, bright, yellow, I walked outside and went like this. What is it? What is it? It's the actual sun. <laughs> we had sunshine for like a half an hour. It was glorious. It was beautiful. See up. Uh oh, uh, we have an a company. A company? No. Well, how how do they say that? A companyist, like the same person who comes and plays the piano. A I know how we say it. We, we have a dog. We have a dog. Just, if she doesn't behave, she's going to come up here to she's get. She's going to go out. Up here. Yeah. Up I here. don't care how cold it say is. Say hello. It gets cold, and she doesn't behave. She is going out. She wants. She knows that she's been neglecting her audience. Uh -huh. And there we go. Okay, Zip, go find your toy. Yeah. Go find your toy. Go play with your Wooba. And now today we're going to we're going to talk about some interesting things here, aren't we Nancy? Yeah, it's a real interesting topic and it does really have um, some relation to Trumpel County. But before we dive in too far, this is an edition of the History, History Files. <laughs> and this is our remote studio edition again. And we made you all guess because that little bit at the beginning, you thought we were going to do a name that road. <laughs> I know they did because everybody likes driving around with it. I heard that down at the store one day. Did you? Oh, I good. did. That's I good. Did. People like driving around. They don't know that I live in fear. <laughs> Mary keeps thinking she's going to get left out in the, in the boonies someplace. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you don't know where she takes me on these back roads. She never tells me where we're going. But anyway, we're going to talk about what topic today? Well, you know, Mary, we always talk about where we live here. We live in a really safe place because we don't get tsunamis. Correct. Or volcanoes. No volcanoes. Uh, right, no volcanoes. No volcanoes or hurricanes. No, we do occasionally get a tornado. Yeah, but that's not a hurricane, you know, and that's, oh, right, that's right, different. Right. And we don't get blizzards like they do out in the Dakotas. No, we do get kind of sour we, weather. We get storms, but not a real blizzard. And I have never been to an earthquake, have you? No, but my sister has. Where was she? She and a high school classmate that were in the Spanish class did like one of those go to Mexico trips when they were in oh. high school. And they were in Mexico City and they were supposed to fly out. It was their very last day. And there was an earthquake and they couldn't leave because after the earthquake, a heavy fog set into the caldera and you know that mexico city is in a dormant volcano volcano yeah. and the pit is called a caldera so i have not been in an earthquake although back when the when the sand mine was down the road here uh -oh. there were some days when they did some blasting and things were shaking but i can't imagine a real earthquake like shaking where stuff was falling off the shelves or just rumbles i mean the you know this is interesting what do you think the worst earthquake in the United States history has been? It probably had to be, because I'm, you know, just so learned in history, it had to be a shift in the San Andreas Fault um, along the Pacific coastline through California. Well, that's what most people think, but the worst earthquake in U.S. history was the New Madrid earthquake, and it was in the Mississippi Valley. And it was a really tremendous, huge earthquake. Well, do you realize the number of different fracture plates 
that we sit on here in our beautiful state of Wisconsin? Well, we do. And, <laughs> and the thing about this new Madras one, now this is an interesting story, because uh, it was actually three earthquakes, each one getting worse than the other in about a two-month, three-month period of time. Okay. Yeah, the first one was in December of 1811. Oh, so those are the early days. It's not yeah. like the one that was in Mondovi, what, maybe a decade or 20 years ago? There was like a 3.4. In Mondovi? No, it shook Durand. Oh, well, <laughs> Anyway. <laughs> well, it was it was an earthquake. I mean, close enough to us where we could like drive to it, right? Okay. Well, but this one, well, I said the first one was in 1811 in, in December, and then in January, um, it was like two weeks or five weeks later, they had another earthquake. So that would have been 1812. Okay. And then the third and the really bad one was two weeks later, and that one. Uh, was was the strongest of all the quakes, and uh, and then they had aftershocks. They said they had thousands of aftershocks after this for quite a while. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay, now where is New Madrid? New it's M Madrid is Madrid. It? Yes, it is in the uh, the boot heel of um, Missouri. You know how Missouri has got this little yep boot heel. That's where New Madrid was. And uh, it was actually, it, it was just, it was a new village. I mean, there weren't many people around here. Well, eight, nine, yep. 18, 1811 11. and a late 1812. And it was a, a small town. They said it had about uh, 400 people because it had been established in 1809. Okay. And then this kind of explains the whole thing. I got this from the U.S. Uh, Geological Survey or whatever. It said the 400 terrified residents in the town of New Madrid, Missouri, were abruptly awakened by violent shaking and a tremendous roar, and that was December 16, 1811. And a powerful earthquake had just struck. And this was the first of three magnitude eight earthquakes. Wow, those are ground Eight. shakers. And thousands of aftershocks rocked the region that winter. And the survivors reported that the earthquakes caused cracks to open in the Earth's surface, and the ground rolled in visible waves, and wow. large areas of land uh, either would sink or rise. Right. And the crew of a steamboat had reported mooring to an island only to awake in the morning and find that the island had disappeared <gasps> before the, <laughs> the waters of the Mississippi. So, and damage, the island collapsed into the Mississippi. Yep, yep. And damage was reported as far away as Charleston, South Dakota, or South Carolina, and Washington, D.C. Now that's damage, not just feeling it, but actual damage. Wow, so those were like some significant ground shakers. It was, a, it was an over an eight point earthquake, they figure. Well, See, this is 1811, so did it they wasn't even like there were a lot of people around? Did they even know what an earthquake earthquake was? Because a lot of these would have been immigrants. Well, they correct? probably they probably figured it out pretty fast. But there we we're <laughs> gonna have lots of dog breathing. Well, she, so if she doesn't stop. She can go outside. Yeah, well, yeah. she's just all excited because yeah, she's been, finally on air again. Huh? Yeah, it's been a yeah. long time yeah. since there's been a zip sighting, so we can we can share this. Now she, now I did you know do some reading, and it said that uh, there were some strange events that occurred around these earthquakes, and they said before the earthquake they, they reported the animals like dogs and and cattle and things and birds were very nervous. Acting funny. And so they knew it was coming, you know, and they report that in other places, too. Well, and animals typically, even with thunderstorms or, they you can, know, when barometric pressure is going to... We're sensing it. Okay. And they said that uh, after the, these earthquakes, the river, especially uh, the Mississippi, they were, you know, knocked all these trees over. Oh, so that's going to change the flow. Well, the river, they said, was full of trees. The Mississippi was full wow. of trees. And um, it actually created a lake in Tennessee, and it's, it's uh, Tennessee's only natural lake. It's Real Foot Lake. Maybe some of you have heard of it. And Real Foot Lake is uh, it's pretty big. It's 20 miles. And I think that previous to the earthquake, 
uh, Real Foot Lake had been more or less a swamp, but after the earthquake and the Mississippi kind of changed its course, okay. it created this big Real Foot Lake. So it kind of changed the flow of yeah. the water coming out of Tennessee. Well, uh, see, New Madrid is right where the is it the Ohio comes into the Mississippi, right oh, there at the confluence. Okay. And really, the only people out, you know, around there, white settlers anywhere, there were uh, boatmen, you know, people on rafts, on yep. those keel yep. boats and things, and and there were some, you know, like paddle boats and things, and that's mainly who was there. So it wasn't like. You know, there was a lot of people there that could really report these quakes, but they were huge. <laughs> well, and I'm just thinking to myself, did they really understand, coming from Europe, what an earthquake was? Does Europe have earthquakes? Well, I mean, we never he we hear about volcanoes yeah. going off elsewhere. Yeah, maybe if they were from Italy, they knew about it. <laughs> could be. Oh, no. Could be. Yeah. But they said another thing that they said these strange things that occurred. They found well, these tar balls all over, tar and they said balls. yes, they said it was petroleum <gasps> that somehow when it hit the air, it was you know they, the earth cracked apart, it solidified. So it was maybe something that bubbled up yeah. from the Earth's crust. They called them seismic tar balls. <laughs> seismic tar balls. Well, now if this, if these earthquakes happen in. 1811 and 1812, and there hasn't been a major earthquake through the middle of the country in 200? Well, approximately, and, and that's Plus a good point, because years? the article I had from the U.S. Uh, Geological whatever survey, survey, they are predicting that there could be another major shake, or, you know, earthquake, shake them up. Uh, in the Mississippi Valley, and this and this oh, earthquake also rough. really affected St. Louis, which is quite a ways, you know, past New Madrid. Right. So that's something that, uh, you know, they've been predicting, and and they said that the people there, the first-hand accounts said uh, after the earthquake, wow. there were strange lights that flashed from the ground. <gasps> Electrical current, I bet. Well, huh? they. They thought maybe it was because there were quartz crystals being squeezed. <laughs> I don't know. That's what they... Well, quartz has a nice refraction of light. That's what they thought that... Oh, brother. And they said that uh, there was like a smog all over, and I'm sure that was from, you know, dirt and dust. Dust getting shaken yeah. out, kind of like when I clean my 114-year-old house and well, I slam a door. I hope it's not that bad. <laughs> They said the skies turned dark. It was like night. And that uh, wow. the air smelled terrible. They said it smelled like sulfur. <gasps> oh, I bet. Because yeah. what's in the earth and the balls and of... And the dust particles, yes. Hot magma. And if there was fissures, all that's going to be released into the atmosphere. Because they said that some of these cracks, they weren't like just a little one. They were huge. They were fissures. They were huge that they swallowed. In fact, there was a town there, a small town called Little Prairie, and it totally disappeared after the Well, what happened to the people? <laughs> well, they don't. And they don't really know how many people were killed in this quake, but they're thinking it was quite a few. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, Can you imagine <laughs> a whole city, an island that just disappeared? Well, beside the, tr the trees falling down, they said, of course, it made the banks slough. Oh, know? yeah, sure. yeah. And uh, it really affected the Mississippi. They said that first it, it kind of receded, and then it, all of a sudden it started to run backwards. It was running north instead of south. So then that would have meant a shift. Yeah. Apparently. Because as you go around, right, there, it's not like a flat plane because we're sitting on a ball, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. So there had to be a shakeup to make that stuff go backwards to make the water go backwards, right? Well, yeah, and, and here's a good map. It shows, um, you know, the whole circle being so even. Now, if I don't know if there were any white people, settlers living up here in Trumpel County in 19, or in 1811 and wow. 1812. But if there had been, it's possible that they would have even felt something from this quake. 
That is just wild. I know. And so was there another quake in 1895? Uh, or no, is that just the it's rendition? It's just showing the area. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There have, I guess there had been one, but not a very big one because 6.8 isn't that huge. Not like it was uh, the 8.7 uh, New Madrid one. So, Roughly uh, yeah. 90, 85 years earlier. Right. And, wow, so and, those were close in seismic activity. And they said that um, it sunk boats that were on the river, and that wow. at one point it, it, it made rapids in the Mississippi and even a waterfall. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it was, it was huge. It really affected the Mississippi. And then it said that... Um, in some places, they said the elevation of, you know, the earth. Of the earth, it actually went down by 15 feet. Okay, so that is almost equivalent to that's quite a the, bit to the earthquake that caused the tsunami that took out parts of what it was it Japan and India that's and Thailand. A lot. Yeah. I mean, that's a pretty significant shift. In plates, right? Because that's what we're sitting on. Yeah. We're, we're sitting on a bunch of floating paper plates well, with heated rock underneath here. them. <laughs> especially here. Wow, that makes me feel really safe and secure. Well, it's okay. just something to you know be aware of. And then they've had people that uh, are seismologists or whatever, and they have studied, and they had found out this was not the first big earthquake here in the Mississippi River Valley. Wow. That there had been another one in, uh, see if I can find the year. I think it, it was quite a while ago. It was like in 1450. Well, you know, Nancy, for, you're, now good feelings gone. I mean, <laughs> I thought we were relatively safe from no. some of the things that, I mean, would there be... I would maybe assume flooding off the Mississippi River, but there's a lot of cubic feet of water that flows out down that river on a day-to-day -day basis. We wouldn't get a tsunami, but we would get flooding, right? If yes. another big shakeup yeah. were to happen. Yeah, and wow. Um, and they said that, and beside this one in 1450, they figured out there'd been another real big one in 800 A.D. and maybe before that. So, so we're not in the, you know, we're not in the clear. The go past, what was it? Get your, if you shake just right, you go past go and get two hundred dollars right, and right. just keep going. <laughs> oh and my something goodness. else that had occurred in this year in 1811, there had been a comet sighted for a while. Do you know that either this weekend or shortly thereafter, a comet is passing us within 22,000 miles? Well, or 22, I don't think it's 100, I think it's I thousand. don't. Ho I hope it doesn't affect us with an earthquake. So well, there might not have been any cause and effect, but you see, it had people on edge because they'd seen that comet. Oh and then boy. they had this earthquake and they thought, all right, this is it, this is end times. <gasps> the Armageddon. They thought that and they said, um, these aftershocks, actually, they didn't last us for a couple of days or a couple of months. It was, they were still having aftershocks in 1816. Wow, that's so that's like... Four years later. Oh, my goodness. So people were very upset, and they said there was a big surge in people going to church. <laughs> yeah. I bet people were going to church. I mean, especially because they didn't that have the, worried them. the geologic knowledge that we have to Oh my goodness. And 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 back then the United States Congress actually they did some disaster relief for the people living out there and, and were affected wow. by the quake. So they were like cared for the American people, right? Well, they what they did That's was, a novel event. They gave them uh, <laughs> if they could prove that they had been in this earthquake and then, you know, had been damaged their property whatever, they were given a certificate so that they could get uh, uh, land uh, in Missouri. But Missouri's not clear and free no, of... No, but that's, that's what they did, you know. <laughs> and Get uh, them out of the earthquake zone and move <laughs> them over to Missouri. There well, we go. A lot of the earthquake yeah, zone was Missouri. <laughs> and New Madrid, I mean, they said that after this earthquake, there was not a chimney left in town. And you know, <gasps> it hadn't been a big town, but it was severely, severely damaged. Oh, and chimneys were important in the well, day because that yeah. was like 
cooking and washing and heating yeah. the, heat, the whole nine yards, right? Well, exactly. And then you're breathing into um, the microphone. But New Madrid did Sick. recover, okay. and they said today it's it's still there. There's about three thousand people okay. in this town. Nice little town, just like Whitehall. But I think if I've been there, I'd be looking over my shoulder all the time. Well, I got a feeling <laughs> I we all should be looking over our shoulder because we are part of that. Um, a seismic zone you know there's lots of plates there's lots of tectonic movement California you know when I was a kid California had a whole run yeah, of earthquakes. Uh, and they still do. They well and they do. said you know California eventually is going to some people said it was just going to break off and fall into the ocean. Yeah, or float away. Yeah. But others said no it's going to slowly shift towards Alaska because it's on a disc <laughs> in the disc is going to turn the disc is moving north <laughs> well that'll be interesting to see where it winds up well that's where uh, all of our mountain ranges came from Nancy and but you know we when we think of earthquakes around here we always think of them in California basically yes in the United States yes but this New Madrid one was was huge. It was a huge, and they said some of these crevices were so big that people fell into them and they died. I mean, you couldn't get them out again. They were deep. They were. Oh, really you something. hope they did that in this subsequent terrible. quakes that it didn't like squash them. Well, it could have been. Oh, but I guess the one good thing was there. It wasn't overpopulated at that okay. time. There weren't a lot of people. There weren't a lot of Native Americans living there, and there weren't a lot of you know. Uh, English settlers. Yeah. Well, yeah, settlers. But uh, today, the big lasting thing from that lake is real foot, or that quake is real foot lake in Tennessee. No, a lot I, of people go fishing there. Good fishing, do you know? I guess so. I suppose it's supposed to be very good fishing. Huh? <laughs> Earthquake fish. Who would have figured? Yeah. Well, so now I thought we'd talk about the other earthquake that we always think about. When we think of earthquakes in the United States, a big one, and this one had a direct effect on Trumplow County. Oh, now we're getting some more knowledge here. Notes she kept from me when she was busy on the phone. <laughs> the one that oh. we always think about now is the San Francisco earthquake. Yes. And that one was on April 18th, 1906. Yep, burned down the city, didn't it? It started at 5.12 a.m. in the morning. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Well, we're getting down There's there, the that's okay. There's the navigator. That's okay. Shutting us down. And uh, it was a 7.9 on the Richter scale. And of course, at that time, there was you know a population and people that were actually able to study it and take notes and things more than New Madrid. They said it only lasted about a minute, which is you know long enough. A minute? Yeah. 60 seconds? And wow. It had uh, 700 people, at least 700 people were killed. And of course, back then, what did they build things out of? Wood, lots of wood. Yeah, what did you cook with and what did you light with? Yeah, everything was done with wood and everybody had fires in right, their homes. Right, and so it made this huge fire that burned for three days. And uh, it, wow. destroy, it destroyed 500 city blocks in San Francisco. So this was a bad earthquake. But the fire coming on the heels of it just made it worse. Well, and that's a tremendous amount of real estate oh, to get yeah. blazed up, right? And, and, and then what yeah. happened to the people that were able to survive and yeah. get out? Could you run away from five? If you were in the middle of 500 blocks that were on fire, what was your chance of survival to get out? Well, what they did was, of course, they said they wanted people to get out of the buildings and here's a, a picture of people that are actually cooking in a street, you know. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Yeah, and then here's Somebody's where stove. they wound up. They had big tent camps until they could start rebuilding and, and resettling people. Boy, tent camps seem to be a rotating theme throughout <laughs> history, whether it be war or pestilence or earthquakes, tornadoes. But here's how it, it uh, ties into Trumplow County. Because that morning, that was after the quake, but maybe an hour or two later, uh, steaming into San Francisco Bay, the Harbor Bay, was this uh, ship here called the SS Bahino. Okay. And on this ship was my, uh, my great grandmother. Oh, here we go. And Some genealogy. My grandmother and 
they came in just a couple hours after the quake and they said the fire you know the fires the oh whole city goodness. was on fire and here they were and uh, they couldn't get off of course in San Francisco they right. had to go up to uh, I thought they said Seattle and then from there they wound up taking a train to uh, Wisconsin, uh, to Wisconsin because my great grandmother's uh, second husband, Will Perry, had cousins here. Oh, I thought you were going to say, he said, there's no way we're living in California. No, yeah. It's going to burn up and it's going to fall off into no, the ocean. They were going to Wisconsin <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but, so it was a pre planned itinerary. Yeah. But if that ship, if the Mahino had come in just a few hours earlier, there's a chance. Early that they would have been in, you know, San Francisco, yes. and they could have gotten, you know, burned up or, or lost in the pestilence. Yeah, and I wouldn't be here. Oh my goodness, <laughs> this is profound for Tremplow County. It is. If something would have happened to the genetic line be of here. this one, this would be just me and Zip. Right. <laughs> <laughs> And I'll name that road to be Mary doing all the driving. Right? And that would be an interesting <laughs> show all in itself. I'd be talking to myself like that's some right. kind of crazy person. Because this was my grandmother right after. Oh, look at her. She would. That's such a cute outfit. Yeah, it outfit. was right before they left New Zealand. And this was her, her new little baby sister, Edith. And uh, Edith was actually uh, the mother of Bob Hilton. Lots of people remember okay. Bob Hilton and Hilton Trucking in Galesville. So they would have been wiped out too. <laughs> well, <laughs> any Hilton Trucking. <laughs> well, and, and imagine making a trip with two small children from New Zealand. They had four small children. Four to <laughs> California. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That, and it's amazing that they actually survived the trip. Well, it, it was just a, a you know a chance of fate that that ship came in when it did. Oh wow, that so, is just amazing. Boy, you know, I guess it was just it was, I was meant to be here. I guess, folks. And we learn so much with every episode of the, the history, history files. And we did not have to throw Zip out today. No, she did a good job, and I'm amazed that. I have my co-cohort with these programs when it all could have been lost right, I 200 be years here. ago <laughs> because of an earthquake. There would have been an empty chair here, right? Empty chair. Yeah, so and imagine that. Wow, that is incredible. <laughs> Profound. <laughs> Nancy, the stories. The stories that you have in your genetic lines. Well, wow. That was just We're both kind of special people fate. when it comes to history. Just fate, I guess. <laughs> always thought that was interesting because I remember my grandmother telling me that when they got to San Francisco it was on fire you know wow can you imagine the plumes of smoke it must have been like oh my god what's going on here and you know uh, New Zealand gets earthquakes oh yeah well they're yeah. on the Pacific Ring right and the Pacific Ring is literally like the shape of yeah, a ball. Yeah, they had some bad ones. Now, whether they had any bad ones when they were still living there, I don't know. But uh, And that they whole known what it was. piece is moving like this, Nancy. It's and it's the turning and squeezed because of um, the Atlantic Rift. The Atlantic Rift.